Uh, hello, .commers. This is a video I'm creating to discuss uh, clock division um, without using a Q962. Uh, and Morbius and I had a brief discussion uh, about using a pedal interface and some envelope generators. Uh, I was not successful in dividing the clock with this. However, I did uh, acquire a divided clock signal in an unintended way. Uh, and I wanted to post it. Maybe this is what Morbius meant, but uh, seems too long to type out. So here we have uh, my .com. Now right now it's set up with just a little bit of audio. The patches here are simply to make sure you can hear uh, the 1x16 pattern I have on the sequencer. So right now this is running off the internal uh, oscillator and it's a 16 step sequence, just a little bass line to help us demo what we're, uh, what we're talking about today. Um, now, what we ended up doing is uh, we used an oscillator uh, and we used its, um, its pulse output and we ran it to the pedal interface. And this is uh, part of what I started to experiment with while Morbius was, uh, was discussing it. Um, if we take our pulse and we run it to a pedal interface, we are essentially creating uh, multiple outputs here, but the zero to five volt output and the uh, five to zero volt output on the pedal interface uh, should have opposite signals. And what Morbius talked about is taking both of those signals, the zero to five and the five to zero volt output, and running them to envelope generators. Uh, so I've got a couple envelope generators here, and I'm gonna take those two lines from our pedal interface zero to five, and I'm gonna plug them into our uh, envelope generators and we've got some blinking lights here and those blinking lights are telling us uh, that we are receiving um, not a clock divided signal like we originally talked about uh, we are receiving two clocks at the same speed however they are offset uh, one is triggering on the upswing of the pulse coming from the oscillator. Uh, the other is triggering on the downswing coming from the pulse from the oscillator. Now, since we have these, uh, these pulses, we can actually take the two of them and we can run them to a mixer. Uh, when we do that, we mix these two envelope signals together and we receive a clock type signal that's actually at the output of this of, of this mixer we receive a signal that's double the rate uh, of the original oscillator so if we come down here uh, we plug into the output of our mixer and we take that output and we run it to our Q119 uh, and use it as an external oscillator input um, we now have our sequence that runs at approximately the same speed as we did before and down here we have two clock signals each running at half the speed uh, of the sequence. Uh, so we essentially have a clock divided signal uh, right here which we can pick up with a multiple. Now two interesting things about what we've done here uh, is that when you start your sequencer uh, from the start button over here, uh, you may very well be using these two envelope generators uh, on the odds or the evens. One of them will be on the odds, the other one will be on the even number stages on your sequencer. However, uh, it could be either one. The one on the left could be the evens, the one on the left could be the odds, uh, depending on when you push the button on your sequencer. So in order to make sure we have uh, these events happening at consistent places, uh, we run a line from the start output here uh, to the hard sync on the Q106. When we do that, every time we hit uh, start here, uh, the oscillator resets to the beginning of the waveform and that ensures that uh, we are consistently landing our uh, pulses coming from our envelope generators on the correct parts of the sequence. Uh, so that's one neat thing about this. Um, and that's an easy way to make sure that if this is controlling something uh, audible, like a drum, you know, maybe a bass snare or, or an alternate line, uh, you would definitely want those to land on consistent and not get offset by one stage. Uh, so that's what this hard sync cable achieves. The other nice thing about running your sequencer this way is you have the ability to swing your click track. You can actually use your uh, pulse width control um, to create uh, a pulse width that's not 50-50. Uh, 
bring it off of five and we introduce a swing into our bass line. Uh, and that gives you sort of a unique uh, way to use your sequencer. Um, you can even voltage control that. And there might be some neat effects you can do with that. I don't know if I have an application for it, but uh, I did find it interesting and I wanted to include it. So that is my story uh, about creating uh, a, a two to one clock division uh, using a pedal interface uh, and an oscillator uh, to feed your uh, Q119 instead of using its internal oscillator. Uh, interestingly enough, I want to mention that uh, this is untested, but it's very possible that instead of using the pedal interface uh, to achieve this, you may very well be able to take uh, this pulse wave uh, and use its uh, s signal uh, directly to one of the envelope generators, and you might be able to take its signal and simply invert it with a signal uh, processor uh, and get the same result. The, 0 to 5 and the 5 to 0 volt outputs of the pedal interface are essentially um, are essentially uh, inverted signals so you could probably take those signals without running them through a pedal interface uh, run one directly to an envelope generator run the other one through uh, an inverter and over to the envelope generator and I think you would end up with exactly the same results as we have here so uh, that's what I discovered, and uh, thank you for watching. I hope it's useful for someone.